you're going to listen to an artist consistently and it's your favorite artist, you most definitely should understand who it is that you're looking into or listening to. But in my situation, they definitely should pay attention to what I am as a person rather than a character. But it is hard to mend these two things together if everything that I portray as an artist is purely art. So it's hard to tell if as a person that anything that is controversial or spoken on about me is remotely even true. What would seem to have been a complete end to X's story was only just the beginning. After getting locked up for the fourth time, and soon getting tried as an adult for crimes committed under age, the now 18-year-old existentialist would amass fame greater than his wildest dreams. From the beatdowns to the mugshot, XXXTentacion was a trending topic for millions after Look At Me's momentum snowballed from a year and a half post-release. His wrongdoings were a muse to forward his career. His legacy has only just begun. And damage control was priority number one. No doubt it's 135 to beat. I'm K Fox, and you know what? I'm not even gonna lie. I need you to pronounce, pronounce your name, name please. <laughs> Yo, all right. X X X Tentacion. Okay. So what do what do you want me to call you? Just call me X. X or Young Dagger Dick. <laughs> young, you want me to call you Young Dagger young Dick? Young Dagger Dick. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I will call you X. Um, what does that mean? Young Dagger Dick or X? I could I could imagine what Young Dagger Dick means. Um, X. Where did you think of this name? Like you just said. I was in boot camp and I used to jack off a lot. <laughs> 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 I, bro, I'm talking about I was watching blue movie after blue movie and like. Nigga, my grandma wouldn't let me use the bathroom no more. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you were getting off in your grandma's house? In my grandma's bathroom. <laughs> oh, my God. And that's what you... grandma. <laughs> <laughs> grandma, do you know this? All right. So X, 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 tentacion means unknown temptation. As far as the, the X, the significance of the X, for some time, the X was the only unknown numeral to me. So it was, uh, it, it played as like, it's like being John, like, like John Doe, you get what I'm saying? John Doe stands for unknowns. So okay, X is the variable, like the, the wild card. And unknown. So temptation is, uh, I mean, tentacion is temptation in Latin. So I actually just pushed the two together in unknown temptation because I feel as if that's what my life revolves around. While locked up, the controversy of his uncovering past wasn't the only discussion brought forth to light. Regardless of childish antics, those who discovered him from this moment forward were turned off by the rumors many felt were true. So um, this is a big moment for you. You're literally just getting out of jail. Yeah, a lot bigger than it was before. I was going to plan to do something, but it ended up just... Do like, something like what? I was going to do like a challenge. I was gonna, Well, I'm still going to do the challenge. I just got to be more creative now because I was going to get out and actually buy a casket and pretend to come from the dead. Oh, my God. And just say viral into the camera, but... I mean, okay, whose idea was that? You thought of this? Yeah. I mean, for as far as everything, as far as the creativity of everything that I do, it all comes from me. Okay. But why the casket? That seems so morbid. Because I got a dead tattooed on my hand. I feel like I'm dead. <laughs> but you're, yeah, but man, you're not. You're... I'm alive, but I'm dead. <laughs> why do you say that? You feel like there's a part of you that died or? Yeah. yeah. Like, which part would that be? Just like everything that goes on around me, I feel like I'm, I, I've become very pessimistic. Like what? Like what have you seen? Like take us into your your yeah, life, your journey. My, situ my current situation. If I'm in love with the wrong person, I, I mean, I, I try to give them the world. Do the to, I don't want to blame it on the career. It may just be that I'm stupid as a person. It may just be to to, to my negligence or uh, karma catching up to me. But just due to the fact that I, obviously I must not have been enough. A lot of shit. So it was a it was a explosive relationship. By this time, details about his situation were still unknown. Yet his cult following cheered him on while facing PBL charges. PBL? PBL means punishable by life. Okay. They could violate me and I'll be going to like prison for a very, very long time. There's, wow. It's seven years minimum. They have to give me seven years out the gate. Wow. And how old are you? I'm 19. You're only 19 and all of this is going on. Regardless of if the Geneva situation was true or not, he still had to have someone covering for him in case he'd go on to say something that could violate his probation. 
whether it be falling back in his chair, to tapping his leg under the table, or rapid eye movement caught by X's peripherals, it was important to be weary of what he'd say, getting signaled to switch topic of conversation to which he does here. I'm just saying this to you as a person, not even like, not, not even on no interview shit, like, when you, when you, you know what it feels like to feel for somebody, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And when you have this genuine, genuine feeling that you get from somebody and you get make that person your source of happiness, obviously it becomes like, they, they become your drug, you know what I'm saying? This girl became like my drug. It may have just been myself because I, I wasn't enough for myself at that point in time. Like, So she fed something in you that you felt like you were missing. She filled the void. There was always, there will be and always was a void in my heart. And it was just due to the fact that I didn't have my mom for, for a, a long amount of time. And my mom was out there trying to hustle, get her money up, you feel me? And, and she was doing everything she could. And I, like, and I ain't even finna dub my mom. Like, I love my mom to death. That's my, that's my, that's the apple in my eye. I'll take a bullet from my mom any day. You take a bullet from my mom right now, no question, no questions asked. But it was just. Although what X is saying is true to him, the buildup of nerves kept him on edge through it all. But despite the reflection of his personality via his charges, it was evident that in this interview he was excited to be here. Strange enough, his music was a mixture of depressing themes and explosive aggression, yet his attitude reflected more of an excited child, which was unexpected for many, and probably because for the first time in his life, he felt free, despite his ongoing court cases. Facing adult charges, then getting bailed for fame, was a game changer for the late teen, but how he'd move forward from this opportunity was entirely up to him. Little did the courts know, he wouldn't take the opportunity for granted and remained upbeat since he was given another chance at life. Only this time, his hard work, dedication, and most important to his new success, passion was paying off. When you look online, they say you have a cult following. So it's kind of like, wow, a cult following. How do, how do people just gravitate towards you? I love these kids. So it was the music. But do you think your rap sheet had anything to do with that, or was it simply the music? The depression, the depression is real. What is real will prosper. I always say that. That's that's what I live by. What is real will prosper. I love these kids, mm -hmm. and I know what it feels like to be alone. I got a alone tattooed on the left side of my face. Mm -hmm. I know what it feels like to be alone, and I mean that. Like, I know what it feels like to wake up somewhere where you're not supposed to be, around people you're not supposed to be around, and not and be around. You could be around a million people, just like me, you, or or bro, or or, or my manager. We could be around a million people and still be alone. I know what that felt. I knew what that felt like, and I knew what it felt like being on the verge of wanting to end it all, but being too pussy to do it. I was, I was too pussy to, to, to end my life, so mm. I knew that feeling, and I wanted to comfort anybody because I found a way out through the music. No, I, I think that it's brave to stand up and live your life. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, it, 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 it it's, it's. It's never the fucking music. It's you guys. It's you guys that are dedicated and can show love. This is the closest thing to love that I'm ever going to get, bro. This is what I realized, bro. This is my blessing. You guys are my fucking blessing, bro. I'm in my own crib. I'm taking care of my mom. Bro, y'all gave me... Bro, if, if, if I had one wish, bro, this was it, bro. And y'all gave it to me, bro. I'm not trying to be cliche because I'm speaking to everybody, but no, real fucking shit. I appreciate y'all, bro. Although this newly amassed fame changed the trajectory of his life, his outlook became more positive now that his past Passion's aggression was paying off, straying away from record labels sending deals and contracts that bind his creativity, and instead insisting on capitalizing off underground clothing brands and fan interactions, something very few and far between have done. These industry dick sucking ass niggas are fucking scumbag. I want to still be able to kick it with my fans. I want to be able to go to the fucking park with my fans and go fucking chill. I, bro, I'm not gonna act like no brand new ass nigga and not respond to niggas. Bro, you can hit me whenever you suicidal. You can hit me if you're going through it, bro. Uh, fuck that bitch ass. Too too good for anybody bullshit. Fuck that industry shit. Fuck these niggas. I'm putting bro. Fuck all that shit. Yo. Hey! When I go to Rolling Loud, I, I'm getting off the stage. I'm not, I'm not performing on stage. I'm jumping off stage. Either come with a mouth guard or get the fuck away from me when I perform. Because I'm jumping in the crowd and y'all better break my fucking jaw. If I don't leave Rolling Loud with a broken bone or I'm not punched in my shit by one of you motherfuckers, then we did not, we did not have fun. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to die. I'm trying to die at Rolling Loud. Come to Rolling Loud, I want to die. Kill me. <laughs> I'm trying to, bruh. 
Ah, bro, I fucking love you guys, bro. I'm in my own fucking crib, bro, because of y'all, bro. I love y'all, bro. This is what I'm trying to get back, bro. I've been, bro, like, everything is so good because of y'all, bro. Every month, I am going to do a free event just for fun. You have my word, and if I go back on my word, cut my dick off, kill me. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm going to give back. I want to give back. I love all of you motherfuckers. Come to St. Augustine. I got you. Eggs, eggs, eggs. Lasagna, lasagna. When the tape drop <laughs> Very soon. <laughs> Hey, um, what do you guys think about, like, playing, like, basketball games or, like, football games? Like, what if I did, like, like, we met up on a park in each state and then play, like, football or some shit? What do you guys think of that? Or fucking volleyball. Would that be fun? Yo. Yo. Uh, what up? What's your availability with the studio? Could I work there, like, all night type shit? Um, uh, I mean, yeah, as long as we set up the times. Uh, damn, I want, cause I wanted to just like be there for the night, cause I wanted to start getting, uh, I wanted to get started on my album. You wanna be in there a few nights, man? Let me know when you wanna start. Alright, let me know, let me know, cause uh, if if you say yeah, I'm gonna go pick up my um more equipment from up in Miami. Alright. Uh, Alright, let me know. Uh, Alright. You know what the most exciting part about this shit is? They really not expecting this. You see how 17 is the exact opposite because it's all melancholy and like soft and shit. So I'm gonna like surprise the fuck out of them. Like I'm gonna work on the majority of the album and then drop one song and then go ghost and finish everything and just knock it out. But I just was like taking like a week or two to myself. But even then, <laughs> shit exhausting. So I'm about to just start focusing. But we just gotta get in a stable environment, that's the problem. In a stable environment he found, Eventually, X would sign a smaller deal with Empire, who'd help him produce his so-called 17 album that he was working on without his fans knowing. By declining to sign a bigger deal that could have locked him under Empire for years, he could continue to use his fandom without limits as a way to hype up his name, and although he dissed the industry, he ended up dissing THE industry standard. I'm gonna do something nice for my fans. Whilst blowing up in jail, a leaked Drake song, KMT, sounded similar in comparison to Look At Me's underground success, with only days on the charts. Bro, I hit up a DJ that I fucked with. Who I did? Drake. Okay. Drake hit up a DJ that I fucked with, you feel me? And, and bro told me, Drake, watch your interview, he said he fuck with you, and he fucked with your partner Ski Mask. He's like, yo, he saying he go call your manager within the next few days. Bro, I'm amped up. Nigga, I fuck with Drake. Yeah. You feel me? Drake a genius. Despite me disrespecting him as a man, because I can't respect him as a man, I respect that nigga career. That's yeah. a GOAT. Okay. That's a GOAT. So you know how to differentiate yeah. the two? I know. I, corporately, that nigga is the GOAT. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I knew what I was doing when I said what I said, and I knew how to approach him. Because I know where he can't beat me at. Initially, he was supposed to contact one of my managers. So he doesn't do it. That's crazy. When you in jail, people checking for you. The the cult following huh. is like, yo, what's good? You still buzzing in these streets. And what were you thinking in your mind when you can't access it? Like, that same fucking week, bro. What he, happened? He, I mean, he, he dropped a fucking video of previewing that shit in Amsterdam with some, with some, with some nigga from, uh, from the UK. Okay, okay, okay. Demon just got out of camp. At the time, Drake remained consistent with number one charting songs and was already accused of being a fraudulent artist by having ghostwriters on previous albums, with fans of the culture building a negative reputation for the star. However, at this point in his career, his juggernaut status will begin to be taxed by ex-fans in the newly growing battle between mainstream and underground. I was on the phone with my dog, Chris. He was like, yo, you gotta listen to this shit. This nigga Drake a fault nigga. That's what, exactly what he said. So he plays this shit. I hear, da 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 my da I'm like, what the fuck? As soon as it started, like I knew. I knew he was getting that. And the funny thing is, we didn't discover it. The fan, like you said, the fans, because the, they're, they're, they're so cold, like, it's like, I got a piece of the internet, you feel me? So they were saying that Drake was biting your style. <sighs> like, they did a mashup. They put his verse on my song, and they the cadence is literally just at the same tempo. You, it, it's not offbeat at all. Damn, son, where'd you find this? 
Okay, okay, okay. Demon just got out of can. I gave my bro in advance. Love is just not in my plans. Can't keep my dick in my pants. My life is you as your mess. Can't keep my dick in my pants. My bitch don't love me no more. She kicked me out on life, bro. Studio right in my yard. Why that shit straight to the booth? How long I been on the street? She said one fuck, bitch, I do. Okay. I give her this, she I met. She put her 10 on my dick. Look at my wrist about 10. You don't know nothing about me. Life with my brothers is deep. Long as they all on their feet. Long as they pockets is grease. I'm not finna shoot the gun. If he, if he not pussy, he'll diss me. I want him to diss me first. <laughs> I counterattack. Always counterattack. I don't initiate things. I always counterattack. Just like in this situation, no matter what anybody says. No matter what anybody says, I'm not, bro, I didn't initiate shit. This nigga ran off with my shit. Everybody knew he ran off with my shit, and they just trying to tell me to basically be quiet. No, y'all can suck my dick. <laughs> Anybody that want me to be quiet and not antagonize this nigga and keep talking about this nigga and, and disrespecting the fuck out this fuck nigga, then you can suck my dick and kill yourself. Anybody that, bro, anybody that wants me to turn, but anybody that basically wants me to turn around and get fucked in the ass, suck my dick. Fuck that. My nigga, bro, nobody's gonna openly disrespect the fuck out of me and disrespect my crowd. When I'm, bro, I'm 19 years old. That motherfucker, what, what is he, like 60? He like 65? Or didn't he, didn't he get like surgery on, on his arms or some shit? Didn't he get like plastic surgery? Can't fear the nigga with, with a motherfucking, what mother who get motherfucking plastic surgery? <laughs> See, now it's different if he was going to get a penis enlargement because I'm dropping like 15 on my dick. My dick's gonna be like 20 inches when I'm done. <laughs> Oh, bro, what? Y'all think I'm playing? I'm, I'm dropping racking tins on my dick. Think I'm playing? I'm finna use that money on my dick. But see, I can't respect a nigga that got plastic. Bro, Drake look like he got titties. <laughs> Drake when they got plastic surgery, man. <laughs> but what the fuck, bitch? You think I'm finna let you take my shit and not say nothing? You can suck my dick. The whole team can suck my dick. Fuck OVO. So OVO. Everybody in OVO suck my dick. Besides party next door, I fuck party next door. <laughs> suck my dick. Spit on it. Eat it. Some predictions are proven by speaking such into existence, but when it came to dissing Drake, XXXTentacion made sure he went as far as badmouthing his mother, posting a Drake lookalike adult film actor, and even tweeting about him continuously to coax the fire that was this beef, confident he'll get a response. The ball was in X's court, taking full advantage of clout riding Drake's stolen flow accusation, and people were eating it up, but yet to respond, Drake was nowhere to be found. As tensions rose in the late teen's mind, the album 17 was still a work in progress. Responsibility became main focus. Branding optimistic cadence held his cult following strong. Letting his people down wasn't an option. How you guys doing? Tell the feeling like I'm trying to do it. Tell the feeling like I'm trying to do it. Tell the feeling like I'm trying to do it. Tell the feeling like I'm trying to do it. Tell the feeling like I'm trying to do it. Tell the feeling like I'm trying to do it. By merging his name with Revenge Clothing Line and focusing on fan interactions, performances, and live streams, a new sense of maturity became apparent to him, making sure people close knew he loved them and going as far as making a tough decision for a friend in need. Kid Pronto, the boy who created the infamous Look At Me cover, was under heat for several criminal accusations held against him. With all of the hype around his photo taken to Reddit forums and SoundCloud algorithms, he found a new sense of invincibility, very similar to X a few years prior, leading the life his crew used to. Yet, when having an arrest warrant out for him, X did his best to hide Kid Pronto for two months before making the tough decision to convince the boy he should turn himself in. Shattered by the decision, X saw a lot of himself in Pronto, while he hoped to be just like X one day. Undoubtedly, X consoled the young teen not to be like him, as it would only get him into more trouble. This alone became a commonly used message X would spread amongst his following. By staying out of the streets, X would host small fan gatherings to work on his image, preparing for his first official tour, the Revenge Tour. 
And I'm telling you as a man, I can never go through anything that you just told me. I can go tell her and her she's beautiful at the end of the day, and they go home with no job or no funding to feed their family. But what we can do for them is present them opportunity. Give me a situation to where in the past week that was extremely discouraging for you. Like I said, it's not about what's thrown at you. It's about how you deal with it. And everything is constantly a level up. The whole process from birth until now is to evolve, whether it be physically or mentally. But you cannot evolve physically and not evolve mentally because that tells a story in itself. But although he maintained damage control by carrying out his acts that'll help him appeal to the law's favor, doing good is by no doubt one of the best feelings anyone can receive. And X found a kinship he's never felt among strangers he didn't know. What kind of life was worth living if lived in hatred and aggression when you can thrive through love and kindness, still showing the world who you are, but in a much more positive manner? The upcoming revenge tour was titled not only after the merchandise he represented, but getting revenge on his formal self for hurting those around him. At some point during the ongoing case against Geneva, the two illegally met for the first time since his newly found fame. Convinced yet hardened, Geneva remembered all of the meaningful moments that changed her life when he was in it. From their first fling, to not seeing each other, to him finding her at a party with his hand around her throat, to them dating officially until abuse sprung and gone wild. Her love for him was unknown to anyone else, but was her to be in his presence all the same. One moment she's testifying, and the next she's in his arms while thousands on the internet send her death threats. X needed to see her for reasons greater than changing her mind about the case, not because he may or may not have been guilty, but because he never felt a greater attraction for somebody who changed him, and all the same for her as well. Dumb love? Maybe, but a chapter needing to be written nonetheless. But just because finding peace is a bucket list of righting wrongs and truthful engagements didn't come without challenging times. The two couldn't stay together, as X would be charged with witness tampering if getting caught, leaving Geneva with two options. Pull out of the domestic violence case, or tell her truth to the courts, taking away X's only chance at doing good on a now universal scale. Seeing him finally get to live some of the childhood he missed out on, he got to play video games with popular streamers, go out with his little brother and older sister, and attend a school prom, taking his cousin as a date. Hey, hey. Hey! How you feeling, cuzzo? You feeling good? Yeah. You feeling crazy? Crazy! <laughs> Prom gonna be fun. Bless, bless, bless. But on an evening of his return home, he realized something was missing. For a short time, X led in many who he sought as family, sacrificing one of them to protect their future and refuge some close who can use his help. On arrival to his room, several thousand dollars went missing, and the only people who had access to it had been two women. With the revenge tour starting later in the month, and the release of Members Only Volume 3 right after, X needed the money to help fund travel expenses, leading to snapping on both women. Unsure of what to do, X insisted that whoever took the money came clean or get kicked out of his house, as his hospitality wasn't welcomed anymore. Unfortunately, with no luck, both women were evicted from his home leaving one of them hopeless for her life. It's unclear if this particular woman took the money or not, but what she'll go on to do will change X's perception of choice. Suffering from depression, the poor girl rented a hotel room shortly after her eviction, taking her own life the same week. When news broke, X questioned how things could have played different. Why? Did I kill her? Was it my fault? Am I a murderer? Soon, the reflection of his uncle's lifeless body emerged in his mind from when he found him hung from a balcony as a child. But this time, guilt replaced the horror he witnessed all those years ago. The young girl, Jocelyn Flores, became a scenario he silently blamed himself for and felt as though it was deserved. For all of his wrongdoings and people he hurt, what was it for? Could I be redeemed? Could I be forgiven? Was I too late to listen to my mother who told me all of those years ago in correctional to stay corrected, although pain gave me power? All rhetorical, yet asked himself nonetheless, but the answer to stepping on the path of forgiveness was to forgive himself. And the question left asking, did he?
Hold on. I have to. That's what I do. Listen, I'm giving you the liberty of a fucking explanation. Shut the fuck up and listen. Somebody let the motherfucker on stage that tackled me, but I'm gonna handle this shit like a champ. All right? San Diego, you get a free show. I'm gonna make this up to you. Then we finna cancel our fucking sense and the show for a nigga sucker punching me. The fuck you got going on? <laughs> we lit tonight, bitch. Stop hanging. Listen, I'm still in Cali. I want all the smoke. Come to my show. I mean, your motherfucking state. I want all the pressure. Come knock me the fuck out. Again, let's have a repeat. All right? For anybody asking me how I feel, though, I feel straight. In the end of the day, this is a life I live. Nigga finally caught me lacking. And it was about time. Bitch, I, I was, what, 5 and 0? Oh? <laughs> Shit. About fucking time a nigga knocked me the fuck out. Just so you know, it was some gang niggas with some affiliates that snuck in through the side, paid security off so they could come in, snuff me out, and then thought they was going to jump me, but we was too deep. Yeah, I mean, just to go back to what you were talking about, it's like when I have genuine intentions to always like big people up and show love, sometimes it gets twisted, you know? And I think that, again, just like the writing thing, there's like another thing that that people tend to like just bring up in, in as a as a uh, as a negative about me, like, oh, you're you're taking from the culture and this, that, and the third, and it really it it it, it, it that bothers me as well because it's like. People go so far, they reach so far. Like the other day, you know, I dropped the song with Gigs. Mm. And I'm seeing all this on my on my IG mm. under like some random picture of people being like, ah, oh, you took this kid's flow or whatever, right? So I'm just like, yo, yeah. what's happening to me right now? You yeah. know? So I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm trying to read, like figure out mm. who they're talking about. I find out who they're talking about. I Is this go, the extension guy? I, yeah, I, I don't even think that's how you say his name. I, I, but, but yeah, that's I, a, I tried to find They call him yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I go and I find what song they're talking about, you know? And I, and, you know, and I, and I listen to it, I'm like, okay, I, I see where mm. people could draw like this mm. comparison off of like mm. the first two lines, whether it be the cadence or the rhyme pattern mm. or whatever, you know? And I, I just like, I'm just like, yo, it, it's crazy that people think that after all this time after all I've been through that I'm the type of person to go pre some 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 song that's on SoundCloud it doesn't have like two plays it has plays you know he has his call following and go and think that I'm gonna like take that and make it my own like I'm not stupid I'm not a I'm not like a person like that you know so it just how's it feel to be at the top of the game now um Leg broke you, you can't chase the enemy. Triple X knew he never wanted hatred to win, but right now it seems like it more than ever, no matter how hard he tries not to let it. What a, oh shit! <laughs> Yo! <laughs> run, Forrest, run! One day he wanted peace, another he'd goof around, and the next he'd wake up enraged. But even though X controlled the stage like a seasoned vet and led an era of youth and nuance, he became friends with his peers, making sure to message them frequently and spread whatever bit of love he can give, regardless of how he acts out. Denzel, Zen, Ski, Uzi, Trippy, Kodak, and Wi-Fi's funeral to coin a few were all a nuance in this new era of booming music creation. A time that wasn't taken for granted when it seemed like old school couldn't accept the new. Regardless, the music still triumphed and the ball was in X's court when it came to versatility. Won't fall, my nigga, I slip not. Won't fall, my nigga, I slip not. 
won't fall, my nigga, I slip not, I won't be dead, misled in head, I never break, uh, lost in the pessimistic state of perception, it's been hard to participate in natural instances, and due to my history, I don't know what's next for me, but keep my composure for over anyone next to me, if Dean Detriment told me love was for negligent motherfuckers I can't seem to keep aware in they head I'm not self-aware, I'm misled, I'm a hypocrite like the rest I would kill myself if it benefit all of my fucking friends I'm sorry mama, I didn't mean to fucking hurt you If I detest my worth, I'll show you heaven on this earth So if alive or in the dirt, I swear to God you'll be my first priority Before the hurt, that means for better or for worse, I said if I detest my worth, I'll show you heaven on this earth So if alive or in the dirt, I swear to God you'll be my first priority Before the hurt, that means for better or for worse, I said Won't fall, my nigga Part of the reason that I can handle this damn pain I'm fucking numb, said the lonely heart Or the drummer boy who'd rather wreak havoc Than playing around with a talking toy Uh, shit, my mirror ain't been clearer lately I see my mind becoming blind, material mistaken Heart indulging in the things that are forever broken I seen the father lose his son while life's so fucking hopeless Uh, hey, cause after my depression is That there's no fucking recollection when your birth begins And there's nobody there to hold you when the pain begins But there's somebody there to fold you when you're caving in Uh, yeah, such and such by such and such You're a fucking loser, man, while life's a fucking uppercut Right inside my fucking gut, wanna fucking end it, but I don't have the balls to fuck I'm such a pussy, fuck me up From boom bap rap flows with wordplay and lyricism To mosh pit anthems that benchmarked his discography the troubled child vocalized his rage in fan favorites such as Young Brats and then some. Many of these songs were released shortly after his release, in the Revenge compilation album and Members Only Volume 3, as Distortion still remained his most iconic feat, using it to portray aggression, while juxtaposing lyrics made something like Go fucking hard. Examples of comedic lyrics on distorted trap beats consisted of What in XXX Tarnation and Proud Cat Owner Remix. Again, his music wasn't for mainstream audiences, but youthful ears who connected and wanted to feel as though they were seen. Diamond Bola broke my solo, she won't fight, but can come over. We gonna play this shit, and I'm gonna try and commit suicide. As revenge tour tickets went on sale, XXX Tentacion became the most anticipated artist to be on 2017's XXL freshman list with a cipher nobody expected. What will he do? Will he get lit like the other artists, or will he ground himself in something more lyrical? With 2016 Cypher's new wave of artists kicking off the SoundCloud era into mainstream publicity, X was still at its forefront with combinations of abrasive genre mashing, leaning more into the sinister side of his mind as he'll begin to portray in sadder songs. X's rolling loud performance grew his traction with 40,000 people watching him speak power into their minds. Life is based off of decisions. I need you all to listen. It's not about what you're dealt, it's about how you deal with it. In every situation, you must keep your eyes and your mind open at all point in times. Your decisions are what pave your destiny. Fuck what anybody says about you. Fuck what anybody does to you. It's how you deal with it that matters. You are all gods of your own. You are all gods. You are all geniuses. You are all stars. You are all super fucking stars. You are all, bro, you are all the greatest beings in the fucking planet. You just have to make the right decisions, and that's all that matters. I love you all, and thank you for having me. This is my fucking dream. After three short years of underground mosh pits and heartfelt messages, XXX Tentacion and Ski Mask the Slump God had shook the world alongside members only in ULT clicks into the new world of famous teens. 
However, although they may have earned their outlets as artists, them as people evidently needed to resolve personal issues. Hey, where's he at? What's team has to see God? Come on, where he at? He dead? Dead? Alright, fuck it. Hey, I'll do it myself. During the revenge tour, X had too much power to recognize how he felt in his moments on stage. Used as his potential coping mechanism, the guilt he carried for the death of Jocelyn Flores weighed on him just like many more he'd hurt. You have to acquire your purpose. Now, that state of depression, that, that basically that mind of depression that we all start off with, when we feel, hold on, when we feel pointless, when we feel like we're not capable of anything, is because we have not found our purpose. You understand? Now, now. When you often find your purpose and you reach for the sky, people often tell you that it's not possible. Now let me ask you something. Do you think you can be right here or right where the fuck do you want to be? He used to let anger take control until it started taking control of him. Regardless, he never betrayed his audience the way he let himself down time and time again. And to those who were behind the scenes, saw how evident it was that he was giving up on himself in silence. I spoke to the devil in Miami. He said everything will be fine is the title of this track, and it's unlike any of his boom bap or mosh pit anthems, yet more unlike the few soft songs that came before. And if the world ever has an apocalypse, I will kill all of you fuckers. Fear will be plentiful, death will be bountiful, I will spend none of you peasants. Fuck your religion, your pastor, fuck his and got sent to a prison in PC. I seen the devil, he's in you with me, you need saving to listen to this, see? Follow him home, cut the right corner so nobody sees you. Turn off your phone, leave it at home so nobody can trace you. Mask your expressions, appear to be calm, they won't read your intentions. As soon as you're in, let them all know who they're all in the presence of. I am a murderer, I am a demon, the son of a serpent. What is your faith? What is your worth? Have you felt acknowledged? If I kill you now, will you go to heaven or hell you believe in? Death is approaching you, 30 seconds to think before lying and bless you. With the Cypher's release on YouTube, X fans and haters alike had mixed emotions on how he used this opportunity to ask a rhetorical question on existential beliefs and post-apocalyptic martyring, potentially admitting to murder. Yet all anyone chose to ask is why didn't he freestyle over the beat like everyone else? Everyone needs to calm down. It was a prop from my music video. Just trying to preview it. I didn't know people would not catch on. Everybody needs to chill the fuck out. I'm not playing around with suicide, especially since I had a girl kill herself in my fucking hotel room not even two to three months ago. Like, really think about this. How did no one piece this together? Like, for my fans, for just for my fans, not the niggas that be hating. How did y'all not piece together the fact that I'm out here really trying to preach a positive message and I'm telling y'all niggas not to give up? Why would I go kill myself and abandon all of you? I literally have like two million fucking kids that look up to me. Why the fuck would I abandon all of these kids and basically show it? Why, if I was gonna kill myself, why the fuck would I go publicize it and put it on my fucking Instagram for kids to go see? There's fucking 12 year old, 13 year old kids that listen to me. Why the fuck would I do that? Jesus Christ, y'all niggas is tripping. Don't call me a fucking horrible person for shooting a fucking music video. Fuck y'all niggas. Jesus Christ. Dead inside. Spend a lot of times again, it's here.
Now that controversy and hype has built him up since release, the Experimental 17 album could finally drop with a substantial amount of people who've heard of him, while cleaning it up in its final days of production. With tracks ranging from depressive themes to instructions on how to listen to this melancholic record departed from what he was known for. 17 was an array of depressing, suicidal theme coping tracks for the broken people who've raged with him. The kids who were judged by the face tattoos, colorful hair, and a sense of no future finally had a mirror to break apart the depressive and traumatic experiences from growing up in a postmodernism era of doom politics and obsessive existentialism. The need we have as humans to believe in something, yet have no purpose, became this invisible cloak of unguided stresses deemed unfixable from our parental figures, assuming that in order to escape our first ever existential crisis as pubescent teenagers, we should essentially shut out what makes us human. In other words, as the generations progress through time, our self-awareness growingly horrifies us, making us more prone to depressive attributes, especially with the rise of internet use in our everyday lives. Seventeen helped with this, with being able to process emotions we couldn't formulate but felt nonetheless. To understand what the system we live in ultimately fails to teach us, because the old ways of life just don't work the same. But understanding emotions in itself is a nuance. After World War II, humanity had a steady decline in the masses having purpose in life. We don't need to write war bonds and issue propaganda in hopes of a better tomorrow. In other words, tomorrow is now, and collectively as a human race, we don't have to put aside our emotions to survive wars, and we're able to look inwards now that we're in peace times. Give me my the album so 17 was a generation-defining leap in how we understand ourselves as self-aware, intelligent kids. Oh. The next step in human evolution, oh, and how to barter our knowledge amongst each other in the information age. But before getting that far, looking inward and working out our depressive attributes was the next step in X's mission. To heal the broken on relatable levels that most mainstream music couldn't pull off. Songs such as Depression and Obsession clarify how mixing the two doesn't ever work well, as love can be an ever-chasing game of lust and heartbreak. Revenge is a first-person narrative track about the thought process of seeking revenge and knowing how damning such a pursuit is. Fuck Love is the most mainstream Seventeen would get, with a track featuring an on-and-off friend, Trippy Red, where the two sing about needing someone who they know will eventually kill their dreams that they had built up with this person. And the first song on the album, Jocelyn Flores, was a tribute to the late girl's passing. I'm in pain, wanna put 10 shots in my brain I've been trippin' bustin' things can't change So it's all the same time I'm tame Put your diss in bag of the phone call Girl that you fuck with, kill yourself That was this summer and nobody helped And ever since then when I hate myself Wanna fucking end it, pessimistic All wanna see me with no pot to piss in But niggas been inside about the grave I'm digging. Have a conversation about my haste decisions Fucking sickening At the same time, memory service through the grapevine But my uncle playing with a slip knot Put some out of stress, got me fucked up Been fucked up since a couple months They had a nigga locked up
but a very important one in the schedule to talk about the great things that we're doing with the Secretary on the Veterans Administration. And we will talk about that. And if you love yourself, other people start loving themselves because they have to spend more time to themselves alone. But people... People, look, you're not supposed to be alone and then start hating yourself, bro. You're supposed to see things about yourself and change it. That's what it is. You have to change it. And in order to reach that next, next level of happiness, you have to love yourself. You have to take time with yourself. Wake up and have another good day today, guys. I believe in you. You guys are going to have a good fucking day. I believe in you. When I tell people to be creative, I mean be creative in thinking. So you don't have to necessarily be creative. You don't have to be an actual artist. But you can be a, a creative in a physical aspect or a mental aspect in the way you think. You understand? Everybody tripping about the Walk on Water song because you're not seeing some evil shit. Y'all want Eminem to say some fucking evil shit and feed the kids evil shit. We're not in that time of life. Be happy that he doesn't want the kids to be on some evil pill popping shit. Y'all fucking tripping, bro. Another thing. If you have a little brother or a little sister, today I need you to be positive to them and i need you to basically be a good influence on them and make sure you're teaching them something good today because they need you the, ge the future generation is the future also i don't want you guys to see it as a bad thing to go to school just make sure you're retaining the information you want to retain so if you don't give a fuck about math don't retain math but if you like sciences i mean if you like science and you want to be a scientist retain the information you need so that way our future will be bright we're out here about to start mad wars, do mad stupid shit, and you expect the kids not to retain this type of attitude, and you expect the kids to be on some different shit when we're not teaching them to be? The only way to have a positive future is to learn to love. Love is compromise. Love is understanding. Love is basically finding the other option other than spreading hate, ideally. I do not at all want anything bad for our kids, for our world, period. I... I'm trying my best to be a positive person and do the right thing and to spread a positive message. At no point in time should you believe that I am trying to do anything bad. It's just going to take a lot of time to release everything because I have to make sure the content and the, con the con concept behind it and the lyrics are all meaningful and and positive so i have to make sure i'm spreading a good message and not being a hit it's important that we all live long healthy lives in order to show the future generations that it is possible and we are capable of spreading positivity and unity very important to stand up for yourself but always avoid conflict whenever you don't have to experience conflict do not seek out conflict because then that's you seeking out evil i just now found out about the vegas shooting my prayers and condolences go out to anyone that lost a family member or a friend last night my prayers go out to you. To be my friend again, and I will make music. Tell him to be my friend again. To everyone that supports me in everything I do, I love you all. I love you all more than I love myself. You all mean the world to me. Your support is what keeps me alive. I love you all. I'm going to stop calling you guys fans. I'm going to start calling you members of my cult. This is a cult, not a fan base. This is far more genuine than a fan base. One more thing before I take a shower. I bet Worldstar doesn't spread this shit. I bet they don't spread the positive shit I'm saying now. I bet they don't spread the positive shit. As Geneva's story took to media outlets, and the biggest artists in the world's fan base attacked the nuanced artist, X maintained a seemingly stronger fan base than the majority who hated him. With shaven eyebrows and white hair, X wanted to destroy his ego in order to rid the negative people in his life and let the world see him through a different lens. A very artistic decision from the polarizing figure who wanted people to look at him. Before you hear from anybody else, nigga, I got jumped in LA by some pussy ass niggas and they jumped me, nigga. Nobody gave me the faith of a one on one, nigga. Nobody gave me the respect of a one on one. And I painted that nigga when he was on the ground just to let y'all know why they jumped me. Pussy ass niggas. I'm just letting y'all know from now though, I'm a man before anything, nigga. And I'm gonna take my fucking ass beating like a man and I'm gonna carry myself like a man and this shit don't affect me. Y'all niggas gonna lose money fucking with me. Oh, and the niggas up fire on me, my girl, and my nigga. Point blank, period. So if you see anything, nigga, just know they have fire and they pulled a gun on me, my nigga. Hey! Amigos, straight up. <laughs>
Look, look at this shit. Y'all niggas had the chance to kill me. How you have fighting ain't shooting? I respect After all this shit I've been talking, how, how the fuck you ain't shooting? Y'all niggas pussy as fuck. Funny how rap niggas be rapping about killing niggas and shooting that niggas. And this and my hand you caught me outside of the hotel and ain't put. Bro, ain't shit. Bro, ain't shoot shit. You beat my head anyway, bro. You want to jump in? That's what it is. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to spread positivity. Continue to do the right thing, and karma will work itself out. Y'all like niggas like 45! Use this as an example, keep doing the right thing. Hey, y'all pussy niggas, know I'm gonna use your name all day, right? Uh, hey. Fuck that pussy nigga, uh, what's it called? Lift off? Freak loud, freak loud, freak loud. DJ Academics, man, come in oh, hey, shit, more man. Let, them, let, let these niggas know these 45, 35-year-old ass niggas jump me, man. Kill y'all boys, but I'm, really, I'm, I'm about peace, love, positivity, so we ain't jump on y'all boys. Pussy ass niggas. Cause really, niggas are really ready to shut y'all niggas up. Right, Back to regularly scheduled programming, peace, love, and positivity. I don't give a fuck what just happened to me. I don't give a fuck about none of the negativity. The only way to outshine the negativity is to be positive. So that's what I'll do. I forgive all of y'all. Thank you. Everybody wake up and make sure you have a good day. Don't start your morning like a pussy nigga. Don't start your morning angry. Make sure you have a good day. All right, guys, let's start our fucking day positive today, man. Let's make sure we have a good fucking day. Stay in your fucking journal. Hey, guys, don't forget to use your fucking journals today. If you don't use your fucking journals, I'll be mad at you. Use your fucking journals. Ultra moisturizing shampoo. What the fuck is going on here? Wait, goons don't use Magnum condoms. What the fuck is going on here? I hope I can make you guys laugh a little bit, <laughs> a little bit this morning. <laughs> Eventually, X apologized as the Migos weren't the ones who jumped him. But with him and Ski on off terms, he told his fans he didn't want to make music until they were friends again, which was his sole therapy at the time. On top of a failed assassination attempt, the pending Geneva trial didn't help him either, as he would go on to break his deals, drop revenge clothing brand, and get hunted by the KKK for symbolically hanging a white kid in a music video, whilst going back and forth with the idea of quitting music altogether. I'm a big truck driver, Trump supporter. Get me a buckshot and shoot me a nigger. The controversy didn't stop here. Yet, through it all, he remained positive, continuing to post inspiring messages for his fans on media stories and reminding them to journal as he believed his trial would go well, even calling out fans to support him at court later that month. Who has a boat in Los Angeles that would like to go in the water? I need to be in the water. I would prefer to be in the water. At year's end, he'd go on to release the project A Ghetto Christmas Carol with new inspired boom bap and rage songs, balancing out the project of sadder songs earlier that year. With the title track called Indecision, he finalized his thoughts after trial's end. Make sure you guys aren't forgetting to use your journals. Keep using your fucking journals.
Make sure you take the good videos for you. You need to get out of here. Love you, bro. Love you too, bro. Hey guys, <laughs> how are you? I won't be long. Um, I really just wanted to directly communicate with those that that pay attention to what I'm doing and that support me. And I wanted to offer some words of inspiration. Um, and honestly, ask a question. Um, for the words of inspiration, I just really wanted to tell you guys that it does not matter what your dream is or what your goal is. You make sure that it is your prime priority to follow what you believe is good for you. The clock started, and anticipation created anxiety amongst himself and family. After being released, the judge thought it best that X should be placed on house arrest and paired with an advisor, ultimately studying the teen's intellect. Now sporting blue dreads and nose tats, his trust remained unearned until his advisor proved to him that he wasn't there for his money, but instead to help guide the teen's thought process. The therapist, psychoanalyzing the varied character who is XXX Tentacion, witnessed the creation of a new album in the works. While watching his process, he and X's manager concluded that there were too many visitors in and out of his Orlando home, people who X barely knew nor could trust. However, X still wanted a woman to be with that night, agreeing with his manager and advisor that picking one was the best option to get himself on the right track. He told one of these women, Genesis Sanchez, that he felt safe with her and the feelings were mutual, asking her to be his girlfriend. The time she spent with him had its moments, as she described there were some days she felt like she was walking on shards of glass because you didn't know what you were going to get. A very bipolar experience for the young woman to witness, but a challenge she put up with nonetheless. X of course was no angel, but with a new hobby found, and the now 20 year old kid was working on a better future. Okay, so I am just now waking up. I am tired as hell, but um, today I'm going to be vlogging because I'm going to be going to a, a foster home and I'm going to be donating a bunch of clothes, a bunch of PS4s, like shoes, uh, just different things to the kids. I'm going to donate like a bunch of stuff to them. Okay guys, so I'm going to be starting a challenge. It's called the Helping Hand Challenge. And in this challenge, the way to participate in this challenge is basically whoever makes the most donations gets to meet me, spend a day with me, gets to go out to dinner with me, giggle with me, play video games and get like a shout out and just simple, something simple. And it isn't complete. What being a boss is really about. Am I who? I brought them teddy bears and all kinds of stuff, right. competition notebooks, pens, uh, boxers, shirts. I wasn't able to get like a, I wasn't able to go and get pens because I wanted to rush and get here. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually trying to get more stuff. It's more than fine. The bigger the trend stuff, like I talked to the yeah. The Helping Hand Challenge became the Helping Hand Foundation, a stunt on spreading positivity amid a world of chaos. Yeah. Oh.
You're looking at live pictures there, Broward County, Florida, where there is an active shooter at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Those are students being let out of this high school, about 3,000 in the school. We know, according to one of the eyewitnesses, that this shooting unfolded around 2.20 p.m. Uh, there northeast of Fort Lauderdale, uh, Florida. According to Mark Katz, who was on the scene, the shooting went on for several minutes. You want cold water? Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm going to bring in two because I want one. It was it was hot, and if you decide you want to have it, that's fine. Just put them on the floor. Mm -hmm. Just throw them on the floor in the corner. All right, this one is mine because I already opened it. This one's yours. You see my badge there? Can't see it past my big my, my big stomach, but my name is John Curcio, and I'm a detective for the sheriff's office. So what I did is I got a lot of background on you, and I can tell right now that you understand that this is a police department, and I'm a police officer. Yeah. While becoming the best version of himself, commercial praise would play an effect, with rap icons such as Kendrick Lamar recognizing his artistry. Rest in peace to all the kids that lost their lives in the parking shooting. The song is dedicated to you. After donating all proceedings from the songs he made, and $30,000 to the victims' families as well, Kendrick Lamar wasn't the only juggernaut artist he had influence on. Drake conveniently donated a million dollars in his God's Plan music video in the South Florida area, just days after the Helping Hand Challenge would be recognized by media sources outside of X's core fanbase. An ingenious chess move disguised as a selfless act in an overall war that the 20-year-old asked for but wanted no part in. Okay guys, so here is my first vlog. Um, today I am basically going to tell you guys about myself because I've never really let you in much and I feel like that's the best thing to do right now to let m my um, supporters know really who I am and have an idea on the type of person I am and to ideally strengthen the bond. So here's my room, uh, is Stitch. This is my favorite Disney character ever. He's very relatable. Uh, I got the fucking Batman, the little fur sheets and shit, computers. But yeah, um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself um, in order to strengthen a bond and to basically, I do, hold on, sorry, I'm gonna adjust this. I don't know how I want this. I don't know if you guys wanna see my face or not, but I'm gonna just do what makes me comfortable. Hold on, just adjusting this just a little bit. So, today I am basically going to be telling you guys about myself. Currently, I'm in a huge state of paranoia, um, just due to my past and just the things and the people I've associated myself with previously. So I'm trying my best to escape that realm of mind and that realm of thought. Okay, I know how it feels to be alone. I know how it feels to be around people and feel alone. Like, I'll be around a million people and I'll like still feel alone. Like. Even sometimes, like, all right, like, I'll go out, even with my own friends, like, my previous friends, and I just would feel alone. And I've just, I've seen, I've seen people, like, like, when you give them ultimatums, they just choose everything besides you. <laughs> I mean, for myself to suffice when it comes to this negative shit, because, like, bro, this shit, it's, like, trying to consume me. It's almost like it's, like, it's trying to get inside of my mind, you know? A month later in March, X released Question Mark. Debuting at number one, he delivered a new sound, balancing emo, alt rock, acoustic, cloud rap, reggaeton pop, trap, and classic hip hop attributes all in the same album. He's dropping a song tonight. And I need all of you, yes you, I'm, I'm pointing my hands at you, I The need project you. stuck with the like, masses when songs like you? Sad and Changes climbed the charts. There's Tracks such as Alone Part 3 and The Remedy for a Broken Heart was another chapter in his depressive phase, while songs such as Floor 555 and Infinity AAA represented his skill in boom bap and distortion. With two major albums under his belt, Question Mark sat in the top 200 charts without any promotion. Eventually, the day came and he'd be released off house arrest, but to no rest, a video leaked of him hitting a woman in the head. The video shows X dancing, and then randomly hitting the woman seconds after. Of course, a child without guidance is uncontrolled chaos on undetermined scales, but with the self-aware young adult reaching the best version of himself, recognized his anger at moment's arrival, 
taking the time to breathe in corners for upwards of 10 minutes and coming back to a situation with clarity. Before the video leaked, the woman admitted she would keep it a secret in exchange for 300k, but instead got sued by the artist for fraud and defamation. Regardless, the leak divided the internet once more, with people who despised X having something to talk about, and for those defending him, consider the video didn't give full context to the scenario. Hey, Negro, yo, with the do-rag on. I love you, bro. I love you, too, bro. I love you, bro. Play that shit. Continuing to inspire, X announced an event called Put Down the Guns, but despite his charges, all went unnoticed when Spotify decided to remove his music. A call on a new hate content and hateful conduct public policy. Despite how the masses felt, Kendrick Lamar remained in his corner, and a spokeswoman for X mentioned a valid point. To the New York Times via email, I don't have a comment, just a question. Will Spotify remove all the artists listed below from playlists? Now I'm winging this. Uh, this isn't written. This, there's nothing written here. Just so you know, I'm winging this whole video. Uh, so when I'm talking to you, I want you to know that this is genuinely from my heart. I was respected through fear, and it's not real love. It's not real love, and it drives people away. It makes people treat you differently. It makes people. Uh, it's better not to be a crazy motherfucker. It's better not, cause I've, I've, <laughs> I've been, I've went through that. I've decided I want. There was a point where I wanted to be the villain, and it's not fun, bro. It's not fun. People start, like it's. It doesn't attract anything that you truly want. It's better to be respected through love rather than fear. It's better to be respected through, yeah, I mean, not to repeat myself, it's better to be respected through love rather than fear. If you ever try to let go, uh, I'm sad and all, yeah, I'm sad and all, yeah. While on house arrest, Cleo came to visit her worried son. While working on his first beat, he spoke to her about possibly running. Cleo laughed and asked him where he would go where he wouldn't be recognized, given his blue hair and face tattoos. As she sat with him and listened to his beat, X was putting together a charity event in his head, to which he mentioned buying a motorcycle in preparation of it. In awe, Cleo thought to herself how far he had come from the troublesome little boy he was when incarcerated five years prior. X asked her, why all of this was happening to him, as nothing about him made him any different from anyone else. Kid, you're powerful, Cleo responded. I've watched you control your crowd and your audience. That's dangerous to the status quo. X sat in silence after pausing his session in Pro Tools, getting up from the table and replied, To whom much is given, much is required. Jump to love, because uh, I'd, I'd like to talk about love, and it's always on my mind. Bro, I think X got shot, bro. I think X got shot, bro. I think X got shot. Say what? On the ambush and murder of a 20 year old rapper in Broward County, it appears two men were trying to rob him.
What makes an artist an artist? Is it the illustration of a painting or a story that you create and give away? And what divides the art from the artist if it's their story that's necessary for such to exist? The artist paradox is one humanity can relate to, which is why our celebrities are so important. The lessons taught by Limelight Experience reflects our behaviors as everyday people, and if redemption is the action of regaining possession by clearing one's debt, this artist's comeback from his former self created a better future for many. Grief and anger filled that hospital. X was not only proving he could change, years. but wanted to change the world from becoming who he had been. Now, a beacon of hope, life, and love, depicted as the art we relate to, ultimately illustrating the imperfections and beauty of our reality. And in hip-hop's eyes, one we can gladly accept as the Tupac of our generation. But not because he's a martyr for the culture, more so how he changed it. How he changed the lives of many who loved him for him, despite his poor actions as an ordinary child who so happened to love being an artist. And an artist's art is ultimately their story. Unfortunately for XXXTentacion, his story ended too soon. A story half told, a canvas half painted, hunted down and executed beside his uncle. He could do nothing but run to hear his nephew's final words be a question. What is this for? And as the masked gunman rushed his BMW, they escaped with a Louis Vuitton duffel bag containing $50,000 acquired from the bank just an hour before heading to Riva Motorsports in preparation of a charity event. A charity designed to give back to the community that raised him. The community that taught him everything he knew and how to survive because at the end of the day, to many, he was just another juvenile needing to be held accountable even after the thousands he gave back to his people. The thousands of people who he saved across the country. His music was their muse to cope with a depression that seemed impossible to solve, yet was, despite the endless situations many felt were inescapable giving them hope and giving his life a greater purpose instead of following the street life that stirred his pain. Maybe there's a greater message there, something we can pick apart and learn from in order to carry on his legacy. His story may have ended too soon, a story half told, a canvas half painted, yet a man completed nonetheless. This here is uh, a game called Dirt for the Xbox 360. It's a real fun game. You like uh, racing and drifting. There are endless different scenarios fans played in their head that day. This could have been avoided if, so on and so forth. One scenario could have been a reality when meeting up with internet celebrity Lil Tay. On the day of his murder, the charity event was originally a collaboration with the young star, buying her a plane ticket and all. Instead of being at Riva, X could have been at the airport to greet her if her dad had decided he didn't want his daughter going. The father believed X was a bad influence, given his history with the Geneva rumors, and when fans found this out, they weren't very happy with him. However, is it anyone's fault if media outlets didn't push his change? Maybe TMZ and Instagram news pages should have posted his positive content instead of his negative in order to spread his good doings. Otherwise, events could have played different that day. The ridiculous crowd that goes as far as I can see right now is a pretty good symbol of uh, how much of an impact he made on so many people. And I just want to thank everybody for coming out. Obviously, I'm kind of losing my composure here, as I'm sure a lot of you guys are. <laughs> Despite continuing to dwell on what ifs, his death called for justice in the streets, riding and demanding the killers to be found and put to death for their actions. Little did the murderers know, they would be caught on camera and captured only two days after his death. Meanwhile, the people close to him wanted justice as well. 
The manager who was with X since his career takeoff held his head through the window of the car he was shot in. X's brother cried while his sister believed his murder was an inside job perpetrated by a higher power. Denzel Curry, leader of ULT, cried for his fallen brother, and Zachary, aka Kid Pronto, found out while serving his sentence, vowing to do better after he got out, finding Allah, and pursued music just like his mentor. Billie Eilish got hated for mourning her fallen peer, Kanye said his amends, and many more cried. But with Cleo being at the heart of this impact, continued to defend his legacy, and finished what was left of her son's music, as she knew what he would want her to do if he had ever passed. Staying strong, she also carried out the newly titled Helping Hand Foundation, now called XXXTentacion, delivering hundreds of bagged lunches to kids in elementary schools that provided relief for the poor, distressed, and of the unprivileged. The charges against her son were inevitably dropped, as there was nobody to be persecuted for witness tampering and battery, yet Geneva herself mourned her once troubled love. But even her story was still unheard, as many believe she lied about X beating her. Drake, on the other hand, used his fallen rival as an opportunity for attention. Two weeks after his death, Drake would release Scorpion, an album that addressed many beefs at the time and mocked X's death through subliminal wordplay, spinning the rumor that he sent a hit on him. Louis bags in exchange for body bags, all the way up to now, wrapping the words, shot him in daylight, and titling the song Daylight, a play on X's popular song Moonlight. There are many more lyrics throughout the years in which he continued to coax the fire that was this rumor. However, X started such before his tragic end with this tweet, sending fans in a frenzy that Drake couldn't get enough of. Still to this day, Drake stands by not stealing his flow, and his freestyle was Central C, staying by his word that he genuinely tried to collaborate with the star, yet decided to mock him due to X admitting to use Drake for clout. Even after his death, Drake and Ski Mask met for the first and last time, patching up any beef they had, but would later turn on Ski since all Drake did was mock his style. Months after his death, another rapper dissed Triple X for the domestic abuse allegations in front of his mourning mother who so happened to be in the crowd. I vehemently reject the trend in hip hop of championing abusers. But an explanation followed by an apology revealed that this cipher was pre recorded a month prior to X's murder. Nevertheless, Cleo now had something to uphold and became determined to do so. From getting sued to being accused of milking her son's death, Cleo fought hand in hand to make sure documentaries were in the works in honor of her son's legacy. But the biggest challenge was proving to the world that X didn't beat Geneva when they were together, talking with directors and asking if the people would believe his truth by the end of the viewing. The director looked her in the eye and said that would be up to the viewer's intelligence, not them. Men have pride, but women have pride, and it's and it's hidden. Respect the woman's pride because it's a different type of pride. You guys don't want to feel disrespected. You guys want to feel empowered. But in the same context, you guys have to understand, we look to women for emotion. We look to women for comfort, you know? The documentaries revealed a lot about X's life we would have never known, but failed to dive into what he really wanted to push to future generations. He didn't have all the answers, but believed in astral projection, reincarnation, chakras, meditation, spirits, and loving your fellow human being, all things adjacent to modern times. 
X couldn't fully announce such unconventional beliefs due to the array of legal battles he underwent, but this kind of thinking is what pushed Ski away. He had to protect himself in court first, but with his death, many hard truths would soon surface. I was always looking for a caretaker, looking for someone that would protect me, take initiative for me, and just be the greatest person they could for me. And, I, and that may be selfish, I don't know. but. It's, that's just me being honest. I didn't have a woman in my life to ground me emotionally, so I always looked to other people for emotion, and I always was disappointed. What I do want to say to my, uh, my, my supporters and, and my family, as far as you guys, the key to love is compromise. The key to love is also loving yourself. In order to, for your partner to respect you, you have to respect, respect yourself, but in the same context, you also have to compromise for them. So it's a very complicated uh, idea. So like, all right, look at this one. I'm gonna like probably take the rest of this right here. Then I'm gonna cuddle with you guys. If my boyfriend doesn't answer his phone, which he might not. I miss Ja too. I really miss Ja. Like, knowing you can't talk to him every day, like, every month, even, it kind of hurts. And you just wish you could. Cause like maybe for y'all it was like on some motivational shit, but for me it was more on like some, hey bitch was good, blah blah. And like, I, I, I really missed that. With Geneva's truth finally revealed, she joined Cleo and told her how much she loved him, but how hurt she was all the same, and accepted one another without spite for the situation. X knew what he did, and the regret that sits in the back of one's head surfaced throughout his career when portraying depressive attributes and self-hatred. Oftentimes, getting on live streams and letting people hate on him as a form of punishment disguised as though he cared less. Redemption is the action of regaining possession by clearing one's debt, or in this instance, to come back from one's former self in light of a better future. You recall if this photograph was taken after you and your co-defendants robbed, robbed and killed the victim. Yes. Who is that in states three of five, grinning with hundred dollar bills in his hands, fanned out? Legend has it, X is still alive due to the uncanny timing of his music video releases, mirroring Tupac's infamous Cuba theory that it may be where he resides to escape fame. After all, X shook the culture with his controversial messaging in a few of his music videos, concluding that racism is a waste of time and how we need to look forward as one species in order to thrive. In the next music video, he watches himself get put to rest within months of his death, and in the third, he walks amongst his cult in a purgatory-esque state, taking one last look at his friends before sitting from the shadows to watch over them. Although these rumors are fun and could almost be reality, given he used to predict his death on a frequent basis, they're merely coping mechanisms as fans used after his passing. Holding on to hope is what he preached, and personally, I believed he would have became friends with Drake, been a great father, and even forgave his killers for what they've done. But then again, my faith in his legacy is merely just a coping mechanism for his passing. If only I can believe like him, rather than wanting to avenge his death in the best way possible. Luckily for his cult, they didn't have to dream. The hell am I seeing in my glass? I'll be right back. You get your copy to one, huh? So I'm going to get Yeah. Well, we will get Okay. 
serious what I want to talk to you about, but I want to understand your version of what, what's going on. I never met you before. You never met me before. That's why I'm trying to ask you certain questions. The only way I can believe you is if you tell me the truth on the little stuff. So let's let's deal with the little stuff. Two weeks ago this month that you just passed up at Riva. Do you even know where Riva is? No. How'd you get up to Riva? Walk, bike, car? Fat boy came and picked me up. Who's fat boy? Get over to uh, Riva Motorsports. Tell me what happens. I come there a lot. No, I know people. They they told us you come there a lot. Okay, but have you ever been there before? Is what I'm trying to get at. No. You don't ride dirt bikes. No. Don't have to get somebody to unlock the door. So we're all kind of stuck in here until until somebody unlocks the door. Read about the rapper who got killed up at Riva Motorsports. Yeah, I read about that. Between noon and seven, did you go anywhere that you remember? Did you leave the house? On Monday? Yes, Monday. I can't even pronounce his name. You know, what, what, they call him XXX? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go back to your co-defendants. What names do you know him by? Chucky. Okay, slow down. We'll do it one at a time. Chucky, you have any idea what his real name is? What's the rest of his name? Ted, Ted something. If you ain't the government, I can see your eyes welling up, buddy. There's you and Trey. You got good eyesight? Can we open it? I mean, I have to see warm in here. Can we open the store, though? Cameras all over the motherfucking place. Oh, it's, it's locked now. I'd have to get somebody to come back uh, in. Can we do that? I'm yeah, not. somebody with a key. Oh, you, you ain't that tall. <laughs> Thanks. No problem. Come come back and... Okay, no, you know, they're coming. Yeah. They can hear me. So as me and you sit here and talk, I kind of know everything that happened because I've seen it. You know what happens when your phone gets in that parking lot at Riva Motorsport? Picks up the router. You know that? Okay. I'll be back. Here we go. Take it down. Five years later, and the killers finally await their fate due trial. Three suspects really believed they could get away with it as they left their house that morning to find people to rob with semi-auto rifles. For Fort Lauderdale, it may or may not seem unlikely that this happens often, but on the day Exo happened to pull $50,000 out of his account, it's no wonder people question why all the wrong factors aligned that day. Thankfully, one of the four killers folded, confessing to the murder of XXX Tentacion and snitched on all of the suspects. It's uncommon that people praise snitching in the culture, but given the circumstances, many wanted the worst to happen, regardless of if they break street code. It almost makes you think that maybe snitching isn't the issue, but committing the crime itself just might contribute to this exact scenario. This is exactly why X chose to depart from representing the street life. He eventually knew better than to continue down spiraling into life-destroying customs, and instead wanted to get his money up so he can give it back. But with the fate of the murderers nearly sealed, the killer's lawyers had one last card to play. Before X died, he said, if anybody kills me, it's Drake. And do you think that for one moment, here today, days after the event, he's killed by two masked men, right? He came out on social media and said, guys, before he dies, if anybody kills me, it's Drake. Um. I don't think you guys say Again, I think the affidavits speak for themselves. Many still believe Drake was behind this due to his recent lyrics, and rightfully so. But apply X's new way of thinking, and you start to realize, why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't Drake continue to tarnish X's legacy since X blatantly talked down on his mother and relatives all over a stolen flow accusation? There's a common Drake misconception that he isn't virtue-based and competitive, but instead someone who has no morals nor code. Although if any have a bad taste in their mouths for Drake, I believe the opposite, as I can understand why Drake's doing what he's doing now that I've applied a newer way of thinking. That doesn't make it right, but it doesn't mean he killed X either. The judge so happened to agree, even after Drake's armed gate guards kicked the subpoenaed issued papers down his driveway, therefore never making it to the Toronto native. But without Drake receiving the summoning court papers, could have also been the reason why the judge concluded it would be a frivolous request to even try and get him to show up. But before the snitch would stand before the jury, one of the suspects was overheard by the cops, telling him not to work with the white man, as if the threatening tone of a murderer shackled in a room full of police and government officials would change his mind. 
After all, the snitch received the least amount of X's stolen money, which was eventually finessed via down payment by another suspect before they were detained. He'll be the only to be released in 2025. The other three, however... That's who they really are. Not the defendant that wears a bow tie to court at his trial, or the defendant that has a three-piece suit, or the defendant wearing a turtleneck in front of you, sitting here quietly. All I wanted was like this. You don't come out the effing car. And he was like with a gun. You don't come out the effing car. The shorter one was at Jassy's side. This is who they are. This is their real character. This is who they are. Killers that within 24 hours after shooting the victim dead and stealing $50,000 from him, this is what they do. Look at how happy they look. Look at how excited they look to have this money. I try, I get the door open. Why don't you sit down and show us? Give me a moment. And I didn't even put all the videos in this slide. You have it evidence, it's dozens of videos. Look at his face, how happy he looks. It's okay, you can look at him. And I submit to you, this is real money. Look at it, how crisp it looks. Look at how the bills are all facing each other. Like it just came from the Bank of America, dispensed earlier that morning. With the case almost won, a few close to Ja took to the stand to give one final speech to the jury and his killers. A young man's life was cut short at the tender age of 20. A young man well into his journey of becoming a man and leaving the world in a better place than he found it. We sat through this entire trial without seeing the defendants display an ounce of remorse for taking Jase's life smiling at us, blowing kisses, waving. We will never get to watch him grow old. We will never get to watch him be a father. Jasse was not spared in his final moments, and I hope the court finds it appropriate to not spare any of the lives of the defendants. Each time I attended court and I looked over at you, especially you, Michael Boatwright, I saw you smirking and you showed no remorse. As a matter of fact, when my eyes wandered across the room to all of you guys' faces, you guys showed no empathy to the family you destroyed with your evil, callous deeds. We the family ask, why? Why killing? I prayed every time I see your faces or think about you I prayed that each one of you would be given the death penalty for what you have done. And whichever hole you are sent, I hope it is hell and you rot there. And I would like to thank the court for actually giving us some type of justice. Thank you very much. We, the jury, find as follows as to the defendant is guilty of murder in the first degree as charged in the indictment.
Don't snitch. No further questions. She put down her coat when it's water on the street. I ain't trying to fuck up the kicks on my feet. Uh, you a new one. You a new one. You a new one. Yeah, nigga. Mm -hmm. I love no, I'm a fuck. Ah. You want to play a game? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, nigga. Uh, all right, yeah, nigga. I'm a fuck. Yeah, I think I got a whole, I got a whole clutch on your ass. I don't even know what to say right now. I just don't know what to say. What is legacy? Similar to redemption, legacy requires gaining possession of a future to leave it behind when you're gone. And if X could leave behind all that he's touched, built, and preserved for tomorrow, then so can we. Legacy could be family, something you've built, created, or even destroyed. Legacy will echo throughout time for future generations to be influenced from, leaving us all who's still here with one life-changing question. What is yours? X so happened to be a victim of his surroundings, further being ravaged from within his own mind. But with the suffering of existence always being a footnote in our everyday lives, if we were able to embrace life's struggles, facing them head on, excusing ourselves for the outcome, suddenly we'll find ourselves striving to be the best we can be. But on the topic of victims, the real heroes here are the ones that forgave Jose. Dylan Tables Turner, the man who X stabbed, forgave him, therefore giving Jose the chance to become something greater. So did Clay Thomas, and so did Geneva. Now that we've dove into the depths of Joss' past and lived through his famous Triple X, we can understand his mind a little more than before. Watching how he lived long enough to see himself become the hero, and how his genius helped him do so. But Jose's legacy was more than platinum albums, big houses, and millions inspired. We see on Local 10, a young woman in hiding for nine months. Her identity kept under wraps almost immediately after she found out she was pregnant. So why all the secrecy? The father of her baby is the late Broward rapper XXXTentacion. Genesis Sanchez talks to Local 10 exclusively tonight about their relationship. No one can tell you who to be. So in purpose, you have to create your own purpose. It's easier to live when you have goals to meet. You understand? If you have goals to meet, then you don't feel so voided and you understand why, you, why every day you're looking at this person in the mirror because that is the cool part about the game. You get to be anybody you want to be. Now, take that, please, and I hope the little words that I did say did motivate you. Appreciate you for all the love that you guys give me, and I appreciate you for giving me your attention. Oh, sorry. Uh, just to show. Oh, another thing is, I hope you guys are writing in your journals. Now, look. Here is my alarm on my phone. It won't show. Turn off your awakened mind. Use journal. Write down dreams. Keeping a journal. Write down your thoughts. If you don't understand and remember your thoughts, you can't amount to them. Write down your thoughts. I love you guys. Later. <laughs>